Hello registered dietitians, this is Sean. In this video, let's talk about practice paper from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, Social Media and the Dietetics Practitioner, Opportunities, Challenges and Best Practice. First of all, what is social media? Social media's definition is following. Ever-growing and evolving web-based and mobile technologies that have dramatically changed how people get information connect and communicate, and it is also a vast ecosystem structures around the four main usages, publishing, sharing, discussing, and networking. Now people are in charge of their own news feeds and can change, engage directly with their news sources. For instance, the use of Facebook and Twitter as a source of news has been rapidly rising. Brian Solis, a social media thought leader, digital analyst, and an anthropologist, describes social media as a shift in how people discover, read, and share news, information, and contents. It is a fusion of sociology and technology. So now the forms of communication is moving from monologue, where it used to be the communications from one people to many, into the dialogue, many people to many people that they are interactively conversing together. As the use of the social media continues to grow, nutrition and dietetic protectioners need information, resources, and strategies to maintain professional and ethical standards for all online-related activities. So the goal of this video content is to provide you, nutrition and dietetic practitioner, with the necessary guidance to engage confidently and responsibly in social media. To position yourself as a trusted advisor and sources of science-based information on multiple social media platforms. To increase your digital presence to mark positively impact the balance of accurate online information about food and nutrition. To broaden your practice application and seize new business opportunity enabled by social media. And to help you avoid mistakes and misjudgment involving ethics, professionalism, transparency, and disclosure. With that being said, let's look at the opportunities and benefits of social media. Increasingly, the internet has become a primary source of health information. Numerous investigators have documented the growth of the internet as a source of the food and nutrition information. The use of social media in healthcare is rapidly expanding. Pew Research Center found that 72% of adult internet users go online to find information about their health. They are seeking a diagnosis, exploring treatment, or searching for the others to who share similar health concerns. Also, numerous investigations suggest that the social media has the potential to change the behavior and improve health outcomes by helping to reduce the time and expenses of recruiting people for clinical studies, assisting with emergency preparedness, monitoring disease activity, Gathering data that can be analyzed to help improve health. Also, growing numbers of nutrition and dietetic practitioners have created food and nutrition blogs and websites and are using social media to educate public, to attract new clients, to network or engage with clients, to promote books or other products, to build a professional brand. Many nutrition and dietetic practitioners are choosing to monetize their blog and social media influence via advertising, sponsored products, endorsement, co-created contents, and other types of joint venturing partnership. So how you, nutrition and dietetic practitioner, can use social media and benefit from it? Let's look at each of them. First of all, why? If nutrition and dietetic practitioners are not proficient in digital technology to communicate food and nutrition information, it is a missed opportunity that opens the door for others to seize. So you don't want to miss out. Social media has allowed individuals without any nutrition credentials to communicate broadly and build a large audience. The volume of nutrition and health information online has made it difficult for the public to discern what is accurate, reliable, and science-based because there are all types of nutrition gurus out there who are spreading false information out there and people are buying their services for ultimately false reason. And we as the uh, professional dietitians, we don't want that happen. So 
Not all nutrition and dietary practitioners may choose to be actively engaged in social media, yet it is important to have a baseline understanding due to the proliferation of social media in today's culture. As the world's largest organization of nutrition and dietary practitioners, the Academy's vision is optimizing health through food and nutrition, and its mission is to empower members to be food and nutrition readers. And social media is effective tool to help this achieve by enabling nutrition and dietetic practitioners to reach much larger audience, developing valuable relationship with other healthcare professionals, the media and the public. Because when you're using social media and you are putting yourself out there, more people are noticing you. And as you are more exposed to those people, you become more likable and people will trust you as the source of advisor and they will actually more likely to buy the services or product that you'll be offering as a result of you are putting yourself there constantly. So this is very important. And what are the benefits of registered dietitians on using social media? For all nutrition and dietetic practitioners, social media can be an efficient way to collaborate with other colleagues. Accessing the share and news research, co-creating the contents, joint venture and partnerships. Social media also has the potential to improve the public health and advance the career of nutrition and dietetic practitioners for attracting clients, such as social media is one of the greatest marketing assets for any business owners today. And if you are constantly creating a valuable contents for viewers, they will be attracted to whatever you will be offering in terms of your services product, as I just said. And building a business. Building online and dietetic business will allow you to serve your clients all around the world and you can travel around the world while you are working if that's what you want to do. And providing additional source of income. You should sure reap what you sell. As a result of you creating the value for the marketplace, you will be able to make a lot of money from it. You will have an additional source of income that you can spend those money to send your kids to the better school and you can also live a better quality of life. Or even better, if you decide to scale your business to the even bigger level, you can empower more people by spending more and marketing more money on marketing innovation. Next will be the challenges and risk of social media. So even though there are a lot of the opportunities and benefits that come with using social media, there are a lot of issues that comes with it if you don't know how to use it. So even though what I'm going to talk about is going to be a boring subject, it is very important to keep in mind. First issue will be privacy and confidentiality. Health information is considered private and is covered by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Personal identifying information such as a patient or client's name, address, birth date, images, and associated health conditions may not be shared without their consent. All personal identifying information must be removed, such as changing or omitting key patient details avoiding the description of rare medical problems and not mentioning specific time frame or location without the per- patient's consent. A survey by atheresis and colleges found that the patient's main barriers for social media use were privacy concerns and unreality, unreality of the information. Other challenges that come with using social media will be legal issues. Beyond the privacy and confidentiality, Social media may expose nutrition and dietetic practitioners and their employers to additional legal risks, such as antitrust issue, defamation, deceptive marketing, liability, leakage of proprietary information, copyright and intellectual property issues, data protection. It is essential for nutrition and dietetic practitioner bloggers and website owners to create and post the terms of service and privacy policy for their site. Because the terms of services de- details the rules of users must follow when visiting the site, and this is often listed a disclaimer, whereas a privacy policy is a statement that tells the visitors about the type of information that is to be collected about them when they are on a blog or website such as names, emails, or other means of identifying a returning user. Basically, it discloses the use of internet cookies via text or files or website that cracks down the user behavior and it reinforces the blogger's commitment to protect the personal information. 
And this is very important for nutrition and dietetic practitioners who are monetizing their blog and website, such as this display third party ad. Because many companies and ad networks such as Google Essence, if you decide to search and optimize your Google for your own website, they will not do business with bloggers who do not have this type of privacy policy in place. Lastly, when it comes to legal issues for the blogs or websites serving an audience under the age of 13 years old, there are specific requirements that comply that you have to comply with the Federal Trade Federal Trade Commission's the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. So if your target audience or market is audience under 13 years old, make sure to review the FTC guidelines. Last challenges when it comes to using social media will be copyright laws. As a nutrition and dietetic practitioner, generate contents for blog and social media, they should be mindful about risk of copyright infringement. Copyright law protects an individual's intellectual property such as articles, photos, designs, and other creations. When citing the work of the other bloggers, it is important to provide adequate credit and link back to the blog. Photos are protected by copyright even those that are easily obtained using the Google image search unless you are using advanced Google image search to find the copyright free images. So if a nutrition and dietetic practitioners are not taking their own photograph, they should explore free and expensive, inexpensive stock photos or identify photos with a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons license www.creativecommons.org is a non-profit organization that is devoted to expanding the free use of the creative works, including photos. And the Flickr.com F L I C K R.com is a major source of the free downloadable Creative Commons license photo. So knowing this information will be very, very helpful for you if you are creating the contents on a daily basis. Next will be ethics and professionalism. Health professionals should not be spending time deciding whether potential social media contents is a personal or professional, but whether it is appropriate for the public space. All social media posts should be considered public and special consideration must be given to patient or client privacy, respect for conduct, and the social media policies of employers. Major ethic principles that apply to nutrition and dietetic practitioners involved in social media are following. Conducts himself or herself with honesty, integrity, and fairness. Supports and promotes high standards of the professional practice. Comply with all laws and regulations applicable and related to the profession. Does not, does not engage in false or misleading practices or communications. Treats clients and patients with respect and consideration such as health insurance probability and accountability act. Protects confidential information and makes full disclosure about any limitation on his or her ability to guarantee full confidentiality. Protects the confidential information and makes full disclosure about any limitations on his or her ability to guarantee full. And also is alert to the occurrence of the real or potential conflict of interest and takes appropriate action whenever a conflict arises. And does not invite, accept, or offer give monetary incentives or other consideration that affects a reasonably given appearance of affecting his or her professional judgment. Also, when it comes to standard professionalism, the following are the stuff that you want to consider. Privacy and confidentiality. Maintain privacy and confidentiality of a patient and clients. Obtain consent when writing or photographing patient or clients. Use a respect for tone when discussing patient and clients. Respecting the privacy of a blog and website visitors. Being familiar with the privacy settings under each social media platforms. Professional liabilities. Consider a disclaimer on a blog or website that indicates that information is not substitute for individual advice from a healthcare professional. Review licensure requirement for the individual states that may penalize for unprofessional conduct on social media or restrict out of state counseling. Professional boundaries. Keep personal and professional profiles separate whenever possible. Be cautious and selective when connecting with a patient or clients on your social media sites. 
critically evaluate any online interaction with a patient or clients, follow social media policies of an employer. Self-identification Identify professional credentials such as registered dietitian or nutrition and dietetic technicians or register, register on blog, website, or social platforms. And disclose employer whenever posting related information such as employer ID. Do not post anonymously to social networking site or blog. For academic leaders, disclose positions of sharing messages about the academy or dietetic professions. Content credibility. Always produce, provide accurate and truthful information. Distinguish between science-based facts and personal point of view. Share only information from credible source. Include the source of nutrition studies or claim cited. Place the result of new studies in context. Correct misinformation and respond to inaccuracy. Transparency and disclosure. Declare any conflicts of interest. Disclose any financial or in-kind compensation if received. Clearly distinguish between editorial or advertising on blog, website, and social platforms. Follow Federal Trade Commission's guidance on for disclosing material connections. We will be talking about this in soon. Intellectual properties. Respect copyright law when creating and sharing content. Be familiar with the fair use www.copyright.gov and Creative Commons www.creativecommons.org when sharing contents created by others. Do not use online photos or repost articles without permission. Consistently cite sources and provide appropriate credit. Personal conducts. Avoid unprofessional, offensive, and inappropriate behavior in private settings that can be made public through social media. Refrain from cyberbullying or threatening others on social media channels. Avoid defaming the reputation of a colleague or other healthcare professionals. Refer to employer social media policies for direction. Let's look at the transparency and disclosure. Why? Because social media has provided nutrition and dietetic practitioners new opportunities to generate income and build a business through partnership with the food companies, brands, organizations, and agencies. While this marketing partnership may prove financially beneficial, transparency is critical. Nutrition and dietetic practitioners who accept payments to promote product or services must disclose this part marketing relationship. For instance, if a nutrition or dietetic practitioner wills the payment to create recipe, write a blog post, or appear in a video, when this content is shared by the nutrition or dietetic practitioner on a various social media channels, such as Facebook or Twitter, a form of disclosure must be included with each of these individual posts. The need for the transparency by nutrition and dietetic practitioner engaged in social media is not only a matter of a professional ethics, but it is also mandated by the Federal Trade Commissions. Then how can you do this? FTC does not mandate specific language for disclosure as long as it is easy to understand and three factors are considered. What are the three factors then? It is proximity, close to the claim, prominence, viewed on any advice not buried deep within a blog, multimedia, even audio and a video. Example will be hashtag sponsor, hashtag client, hashtag paid. Company X gave me this product to review. I was compensated by X to write this blog post. For you nutrition and dietetic practitioner, challenge is not simply recognizing the disclosure of requirement, but applying it to unique and diverse set of marketing relationship they may face when paid to create a recipe, photo, video, or blog post, receive a payment for products, coupons or gift in exchange for mentions on social media, pay to make social media comments or advocate in any way on behalf of the third party, compensated to host a Twitter chat or participate in other online activities, when served as a consultant or advisory board member and writing or responding on a related topic even if not compensated for the specific activity, when served as a paid media spokesperson for a company or brand and sharing videos of TV interviews or linked to the articles on the social media channels, 
when we receive the free travel or experiences by company, brand organization. Last but not least, when linked to the product or company's website and receive a commission. However, disclosure is not needed when writing about free products that were sample at the store or expo as long as there is no financial connections. So putting it all together, what would be the best social media best practice? First, identify social media goals. Nutrition and dietetic practitioners should consider what they hope to achieve by engaging in social media, start with the end goal in the mind. Is it simply keeping up with the food, trends, nutrition news, or networking with the colleagues? Or is it the goal to educate the public or promote products and services and build a business? Identifying individual goals and vision of the success will dictate the best social media strategies and determine the required investment in time and resources. Be selective. Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn are a good place to start. Pinterest, Instagram, and Snapchat have been rapidly growing, especially with the popularity of recipe sharing and growth of the visual web such as photos, videos, and infographics. Maintaining a social media presence takes time and patience. More social media platforms a nutrition dietetic practitioner is on, the more time it will take. But with the complexity and rapid growth of the new social platforms, it is difficult to keep up with the latest technology and changes to the existing platforms. So be the laser beam rather than a diffusing light bulb. Rather than attempting to master every new social platform, focus on a few Increase confidence and build a following. If you have to pick one, focus on YouTube because people are more likely to engage in video contents as compared to other types of audio or image contents. Next, no target audience. Social media allows direct to consumer engagement, yet, not all target audience as a nutrition or dietetic practitioner desires to reach will be active on social media. Understanding the end user will help guide message development and potential communication channels. The best way to connect with the audience is to know where they are already spending time, which may be offline on a various social platforms from Facebook to Snapchat. Facebook is good for older population, let's say 40 years old and up. Instagram and Snapchat will be great social media for the younger if you are targeting younger populations such as college students or high schooler. And YouTube is popular across the all the age. That's the one of reason I strongly recommend going into YouTube if you are trying to build an audience. Add value. When determining what to share on social media, consider the 80-20 rule as a guiding principle. 80% of a social media content should benefit the audience, so you are basically creating the contents that is only for creating the contents and creating the value in their life, not just to try to sell. And the rest of the 20% should be self-promotional. Even when you are creating contents, consider about what would be the 20% of information that you can create that can help 80% of viewers in profound ways. Find ways to add values by providing updates on new nutrition studies and sharing online articles or blog posts, especially content created by food and nutrition peers and academy. Recommended reading will be Jeb 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 Right Hoop by Gary Vee. This book basically talks about how adding value in the first place will be so much beneficial for you if, you are and if your end goal is to sell your product. Next will be learn from the others. Follow nutrition and dietetic practitioners who are already positively and professionally engaged in social media. Some examples of the already well-established social media influencers in the nutrition field will be Thomas D. Lauer, Sarah Moran Nutrition, Nutrition by Victoria, Dr. Berg, Dr. Josh X, Dr. John Bergman, nutritionfacts.org, Quest Nutrition, then at May, and there are so much more than this. And make sure to follow these people and observe posts from these people and 
and see what they're doing basically monitor them and how they are putting the title how they are putting the descriptions how they are organizing their contents and for nutrition and dietetic practitioners who want to start a blog begin following well-established blog as well examining their writing style and identify desired feature of the blog keep in mind that more and more blog contents are going from blog to vlog so blogs are basically writing style of the so the writing style of the contents and vlogs are more like video types of contents. As I say, more and more people are preferring to watch the video contents of the contents phone rather than the other types of phone. So creating contents based on the video will be a great idea considering following years to come. Next will be be weather centric. Nutrition and dietetic practitioners who are blogging or have a plans to create a blog should keep the audience in mind when developing contents. Unless the blog is specifically targeting food and nutrition colleagues or other healthcare professionals, readers will likely be general public. Use a clear and simple language when translating science from a text to make it more readable, such as short paragraphs, subheads, lists, visuals, and, be, and also be concise. Be authentic. Craft your own voice and personality in social media that is professional yet personable. Nutrition and dietetic practitioners can be authoritative yet still have their personality shine through. People like people. Social media engagement will increase if the audience can connect with a person behind the post. Socialized contents. Quality contents remains the best way to build a blog or vlog, but an audience cannot discover a blog or vlog post without support. Each time new contents is added to the blog or vlog, use a Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and other social media platforms to share the contents and drive viewers back to the blog. Consider these platforms part of the syndication plan to extend the, search, extend the reach. Social media management, management tools such as Hootsuite, TweetDeck, Simic, and Buffer can help schedule the managed posts across the server social network. Consider paid options. Social media can be an effective way to reach a mass audience, yet the competitions to break through has become more challenging. Social media platforms are evolving into media companies, controlling which messages get communicated through their platforms. For instance, many platforms have moved from chronological to algorithm-based feeds, which make some posts invisible to followers without paid support. Depending on a nutrition or dietetic professional's goals, Paid promotions such as a prompted, promoted post on Facebook can be an effective way to market products or services. Be responsive. Social media is all about two-way communication. It is an interactive dialogue, not a monologue. When posting new information, be prepared to respond to questions and comments in a timely manner. This helps fuel conversation and establish a sense of community. Dig into data. Nutrition and dietetic practitioners can use free tools such as Google Analytics to learn more about where their blog traffic originates and user behavior on the site. It can help nutrition and dietetic practitioner blogs get to know their readers, who can be also potential clients, what they are looking for, and how you can better serve them. If you decide to sell your own nutrition-related services or product, you must learn where the traffic is coming from so that you can tar- you can craft your own market messages based on the traffic. The, tar- the data can also help identify the social platforms that are most responsive to contents to customize outreach to maximize reach. I, Sean Jung, will be posting you a video about how to use Google Analytics. So subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button for the upcoming videos to come. Be respectful. If a nutrition and dietetic practitioner would not say something in person, in a crowded elevator, or on a job interview, it should not be said online. Once something is posted in a social media, it is in a public sphere. The reach is far and forever. Also, consider the timing of social media sharing. Refrain from posting during the major news-making tragedies or natural disaster. Turn off pre-scheduled automated posts so not as so it doesn't appear as intensive. Seek outside help. The bar is quite high when it comes to food and nutrition blog today. 
Unless nutrition and dietetic practitioners have a strong technology and design skill, they should not attempt to do it by themselves. A contemporary, highly visual and eye-catching vlog is essential to promote a professional image, break through the crowded vlog sphere, and gain followers. As colleagues who they use to create their blogs or look for fresh designs on a popular blog. Do an online search for local social media consultants or designers specializing in WordPress, the most popular blogging platform. Consider using the following freelancer websites such as 99designs.com, upwork.com, fiverr.com, craigslist.com. And I, Sean Jung, can help you with email and digital marketing in sense. So in conclusion, nutrition and dietetic practitioner can benefit immensely from social media. However, there are multiple areas that may be posed threats if certain guidelines are not followed. The use of social media and digital technology can help you, nutrition and dietetic practitioner. And I, Sean Jung, have visions to help 90,000 registered dietitians across the states to help them using social media, particularly in email and digital marketing, by the end of 2019 to connect with the colleagues, promote public health, advocate for a cause, and advance their own careers. And I hope this video was helpful. If you want a copy of this mind map, please contact me then I will give you the PDF file of this mind map. And I will see you in the next video with a more great content regarding social media practices. Have a great day.